Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. Over the course of human history, medicine has come quite a long way. Centuries ago, we thought the body was composed of different liquids called humors, and if you were unlucky enough to get sick during this time, your blood would have been withdrawn in a process known as bloodletting. Gross. In modern times, we can give antibiotics, perform open-heart surgery, and even operate on the brain. However, one of the newest advances in medicine is stem cell research. You may have heard of stem cells before, but there's a lot of mystery about what they actually do. Why is this such a promising new field? Well, to answer this, let's shrink down to the size of a cell. Normal cells in the body are specialized. We have neurons neurons in the brain, red blood cells in our blood, and cells that make up your muscles and bones. All of these cells carry the same DNA which is unique to you, unless you're an identical twin. But what makes the cells different is that some of them have certain genes turned either on or off. The genes are encoded in the DNA, which is all the same, but the gene expression is different. This means that the genes expressed in a red blood cell are different than the genes expressed in a lung cell. And that lung cell will always stay a lung cell. It will not change into a red blood cell one day, however, stem cells can. Stem cells are unspecialized cells that give rise to specialized cells in a process called differentiation. When a stem cell divides, the new cells can either remain as stem cells or become other cells with a specialized function, like muscle cells. There's a lot of cell talk, but we're gonna keep going. There are two main types of stem cells, those found in adults and those found in embryos. Somatic or adult stem cells can be used to repair and maintain the tissues in which they are found. These can be found in the brain, skin, and bone marrow. In fact, during a bone marrow transplant, transplant, stem cells are injected into a patient whose bone marrow was damaged somehow. The unspecialized stem cells then create new bone marrow, allowing for the body to produce healthy blood cells again. Stem cells can also be used for organ and tissue regeneration. If the cells differentiate in just the right way, they can act as a renewable source of replacement cells. For example, stem cells beneath the skin can be used to make skin grafts for burn victims. And this could eliminate our reliance on organ donation and make the wait list for transplants a lot shorter. Stem cells also have the potential to replace damage brain tissue, treating diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Furthermore, embryonic stem cells can differentiate and form insulin-producing cells that can treat people with type 1 diabetes. And the list of treatments goes on and on and on. The main controversy with stem cells, however, involves those taken from embryos. It's important to note that these cells are not obtained from fertilized eggs in a woman's body. Instead, they are gathered from eggs in an in vitro fertilization clinic. These are the eggs that were not implanted in a mother's uterus and were willingly donated for research purposes. But this does beg the question of whether or not a life was destroyed in the process, which ultimately leads to the debate. The use of stem cells are seemingly endless, and we've come a long way since our humble beginnings, and will hopefully continue to advance. So tell me, have you had any experience with stem cells or organ donation? Or maybe you know someone who has? I'd love to hear your or their story. And if not, let us know in the comment section below what you want us to talk about next. Make sure you come back every Monday and Thursday for a brand new video. And if you want even more Life Noggin, check out this awesome video we did on the science of allergies. And make sure you're following us on Facebook and Twitter. Links are below. As always, I am Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to keep on thinking.